Welcome to the Rifle Squad standard loadouts video. In this video, we will go over in a little bit more detail the Rifle Squad's loadouts for each of its members. First off, you may be wondering, why the Rifle Squad? Why not the Weapon Platoon, or the Tank Platoon, or the Ace Pilot loadouts? The reasoning is simple. In the real life US Marine Corps, every Marine is a Rifleman, and so we do that here. What it does is it allows everyone to have the same base. No matter what mission, anyone can be put into the Rifle Platoon to carry out a mission. Whether there are no vehicles for a mission or not enough personnel, we at least know that we're going to have a rifle platoon that everyone knows the jobs and responsibilities of. Moving into actual video now, I want to pose a question. How many of you know this guy all too well? The thermal 50 caliber sniper rifle, anti-tank weapon on his back, and super secret squirrel gun with silencer, scopes, and all manner of other attachments that may be on it. Maybe this guy was you recently. Who knows? Is this loadout effective? No, not really. Is it fun? Probably, or else he probably wouldn't be carrying it. However, we need to get that effect in this back while keeping it fun and simple at the same time. This is where the standard loadouts comes in. They are a basic rule set of gear that you should always take with you on every mission with room for mission specific equipment that you can add in once you know your objectives. First up in a rifle squad fire team, we have the rifleman. The Rifleman's standard loadout is the blueprint of just about every other standard loadout in the unit. His loadout is the most basic. He carries a rifle, seven magazines for ammunition, two smoke grenades, a compass, a watch, safety goggles, three bandages, and earplugs. As of the creation of this video, the rifle we use is the M16A4. Further information on this weapon system is in another video. This can also be swapped out with an M4A1. The M16A4 that is being shown is an iron sighted M16A4, however you will most likely see RCOs or CCOs range combat optics and close combat optics attached to other unit members weapons during missions. Iron sights work fine however for most situations and are a great place to start in the beginning when you're just joining the 15. This loadout keeps the rifleman light with plenty of ammunition. Also he does not have a map to keep him from worrying about things the team leader is in charge of. The earplugs and goggles help with things like deafening noises like machine gun fire and helicopter rotor wash. Next up is the assistant automatic rifle. The AAR has a nearly identical standard loadout to the Rifleman. The only changes are 5 magazines instead of 7 and 2 boxes of ammo for the automatic Rifleman. Because this loadout supports the AR, the AAR is usually the person that goes with the AR and it bounds and is always easily reachable in formations. After the AAR is the automatic Rifleman. The Automatic Rifleman has the heaviest standard loadout in the team, and his loadout is the most extreme when it comes to changes, but as you can see, it really isn't too much of a drastic change. An M249 saw is carried instead of an M16A4 or M4A1, four boxes of 200 round belts instead of seven 30 round magazines, and last but not least, an M9 pistol with four magazines. Those are the three big changes. The M9 is given to the AR because even though he can use the ammunition of his teammates, his job duties may at times require him to burn through ammunition, although there are ways to minimize this from another video. The AR may not make too many additions to his loadout, as his only concern usually is the deployment of his main weapon. Firing AT or grenade launchers or setting explosive ordnance is usually left to the rifleman or the AAR, whose loadouts and weights are empty and light enough to support such things. Finally, we have the team leader. His loadout must look quite familiar right now. The differences are a green smoke and a white smoke instead of two smokes of the same color. An M9 with four mags like the AR, grenade launcher rounds for his grenade launcher, and a map to help coordinate his team and himself with the rest of the squad and the squad leader. The reason for different colored smoke is because there needs to be at least two colors in every team, one for concealment and one for marking friendly positions. Another in interesting note is that the M9 is optional. That's right, optional. It is are common for our team leaders to not take their pistol in favor of more into a three rounds on their person and not in their backpack or on another member of the team. A few closing notes. Mission specific equipment that may be carried are things like night vision goggles, a backpack for carrying extra ammunition, grenades, etc., extra grenade launcher rounds, and many other things that you can ask your team leader about. However, if, even without mission specific equipment, you can still carry out a mission with the standard loadout, you just won't be nearly as effective as a person who took the time to add in some things that fit the mission. 
The loadout will keep you as light as possible and deters bad habits like grabbing too much gear out of the crate. For newcomers, it gives them, not, gives them an idea of what to take. I hope this video was informative and helps. Remember only take what you need as having too much gear makes you combat ineffective. Make small changes to standard loadouts for missions like carrying an AT4 if you're expecting light armor, or a backpack with extra, extra supplies if the mission expected to be longer than normal. Thanks for watching.